Hello Milwaukee, welcome to Ireland and thank you for inviting me back to the Irish Fest. I was so proud to make my box to you there a couple of years ago and I'm back again, virtual, but I'm back. So today I'm gonna to make some box tea for you. I'm gonna grate the raw potato, add it to some mash, a little bit of salt, a little bit of uh, water, and make a boxy pancake, which I'm gonna fill with the best of Irish fillet beef. You got them again. <laughs> I don't believe it. You got me eyebrows. <laughs> okay, so I've got rooster potato here. I'm going to grate this into a cloth. And like I told you the last time at the show, when you see red, you really stop. Grated rooster, don't need that little bit, into a cloth. And the reason I'm gonna extract the moisture is I wanna take a lot of the starch out of this. So I've got a bowl here. I'm just gonna squeeze this. And you get a lot of water in the potato. I want it as dry as possible for the pancake. There's a lot of, bit of water off that. Okay, don't need that. Another bowl, and this is our pulp. Nice dry flaked potato. To this I'm going to add a handful of flour and a little bit of mash cooked last night, left over in the fridge, a great way to get rid of it. Now the recipe is about one third, one third, one third. So one third grated raw potato, one third mash, and one third flour. But you can play with it because potatoes change at the time of year, you know. In the restaurant, we actually don't put mashed potato into it. But for doing demos and for doing out, work, cooking out in this wonderful field full of Queen's potatoes, I'm gonna use this to make it easy today for us. And now I want some flour. But two spoonfuls in there. Mix that up. You just kind of crumb it, you're breading it. Just get to make sure there's no lumps in the mash. Not that I'd have lumpy mash. And a bowl, I'm gonna just put about half of this mix in here because we're gonna make one pancake. There's probably enough for about four in that mix. And to this, I'm just gonna add some salt. Got some local sea salt, pinch of salt, and we want some water, fresh spring water. Now you wanna make a batter out of this, so just add a little first, give it a whisk. The thicker you want the pancake, the less water you put in. But I'm gonna roll this pancake around the beef today, so I'm gonna put a little bit more water into it. Tiny bit more. And as with any, like with any pancake you're making, or any pancake batter, you've gotta let it sit for a little while. Tiny drop more, what a nice thin pancake. Let that sit for a little while. In the meantime, we can heat up our pan. We're gonna have a medium heat on the pan because you wanna cook the raw potato right through. That's very important, otherwise the bottom will burn on you and then you've just got a burnt pancake. So let me light my fire and let this heat up. So my pan is at a nice heat. I'm gonna add a little bit of butter to it. Just wanna soften it up a little bit. Don't try that at home. A Little bit of butter. And I'm gonna add the pancake mix to this.
spread it out. And we're going to let that cook gently. I uh, don't want it burning too much. Nice brown color on the bottom. And when this side is dry, we can flip it. Now you should really try making this at home. And if you do, tweet it or Instagram it and just hashtag BoxD at it. We'd love to see it. We'd love to see your attempt. It's a great old tradition that's kind of dying out in the country. Peculiar to Fermanagh, Leitrim where I'm from, Cavan. Uh, but a great old dish, fantastic old dish. Beat your pasta hands down. So we can see it's drying out nicely here. Once this side is dry, we can actually flip the pancake. It does take about three minutes either side to cook it, but we're getting a nice little color underneath here. You see a nice color coming up, nice golden color. And we flip it now in about one more minute, I think. I want it just to dry out on this side. So this is practically cooked out on this side, on the, the far side, nice color in it. And we're just going to flip her up. Nice, that's the color I'm looking for, that nice golden color on our boxy pancake. This is going to be absolutely fantastic. So there we have our boxy pancake, ready for a nice filling of Irish beef. So I brought back Dave with me. You remember him from Milwaukee. What year was that? 2017. No, I don't know. Where's the time going? Uh, three years ago. I thought it was two. But Dave's back and Dave's going to make the filling for our beef box tea. Here we've got some beautiful Irish fillet of Irish beef. Grass reared. Best beef in the world. Bar none. Dave? Thank you very much. You can season that a little bit. Yeah, we're going to also add a little bit of oil instead of adding oil to the pan. And that will allow it to cook a little bit better without having too much oil in there. And not any oil, it's New Grange, it's canola, or rapeseed as we call it in Ireland, but canola oil. And we're in County Loud, but we're in the kind of Boyne Valley region here. And the food, most of the food that we're cooking here today is from this local area. And it's absolutely fantastic. There's a Boyne Valley food trail. If you get over to Ireland, make sure you go and do it. It's a fantastic food trail. You'll get to meet all the artists and producers. You'll get to meet the farmers. You can even come out and enjoy yourself in a field of potatoes. It's our field of dreams. Okay, so what we're gonna start with, we're just gonna seal off these beef medallions. We don't wanna cook them all the way through. We're gonna finish them in the sauce that we make. You're gonna season them first though. They're all seasoned. Oh God, way ahead of me today, way ahead of me. So we're only doing this to get a bit of color on them and that's it. We just leave there till they get that nice little brown crust on the outside. And then we're going to turn them over. We want to keep them as, as kind of rare as, as we can because uh, we want to let them cook in the sauce. Obviously, you can cook your beef however way you want to cook it, but we'd always kind of recommend kind of rare to medium rare is the best way to have Irish fillet beef. Uh, and I always say there's no point in killing the animal twice. Once is enough. It smells really good. I wish you were here, guys. Nice color on that, Dave. So we've just got our sear on it. We're going to give that a little bit longer on this side and then we're going to start making the sauce. But we're not going to clean the pan. We're going to use the little bit of juices that the beef's going to leave in there to kind of get our sauce started. Excellent. Really good. That smells so good. So our sauce, we've got shallots, some mushrooms, some whiskey that he put in a cup with a really wide rim. It makes it very difficult to drink. He knows me too well. <laughs> so we're gonna start off with some finely chopped shallots. And to that, we're gonna also add our portobello mushrooms. So these are the nice big thick mushrooms that you see in the shops. They're really nice, they give a lovely flavor. And that's gonna cook away. And what we want to do with these, we don't want to saute these until they're really dark colored. We want to just let these gently cook because we want them to go a nice little type of translucent. So it's a gentle cooking that we're doing with this. Everything is gentle here in Ireland. <laughs> Except for the bosses. 
Now as this is starting to cook, you can see the onions are starting to go a little bit opaque, which is how we want them. The mushrooms have a little bit longer to go. You just need to keep stirring around. You don't want the onions to catch, otherwise they'll cook a bit too much. And we're out in the wilds of County Loud here, with the wind howling and the rain absent. <laughs> As it is in Ireland always, you know. <laughs> okay, now this sauce is kind of like a little bit of a variation of a peppercorn sauce, but in this case we're using cracked black pepper. We're going to put this in now. We like a nice bit of pepper in here because it gives it a lovely heat, a lovely little bit of spice. But you can put a little bit less if you don't fancy it too much, but we would say go with the, the full amount. I'm sure the crack is mighty in the Isle of Man. Now, <laughs> this is for me. <laughs> but no, we're going to add a little bit, and this is a very important part of this process. We're going to add the whiskey in. And then we're going to flame it. Oh! And I think if I remember right, the last You got them again! Got them <laughs> I don't believe it, you got me eyebrows. <laughs> now we're going to burn off the whiskey there. Remind me next time not to stand downwind of him. <laughs> now as you can see, the alcohol is burnt off there. And now we're going to add our cream in, okay? And we're going to use the cream to reduce down. We want that to reduce nice and fast. And once it's nearly ready, we're going to return our fillet steaks to the sauce. Just to finish off cooking them to whatever way you want to cook them. Uh, as I said, we'll do ours medium rare, but you know, leave it a little bit longer if you like it medium. Now our sauce is just starting to reduce and this is where we're gonna add in our fillet beef back to the pan. And that's gonna help cook it along. And it'll bring that extra bit of flavor in there. Don't well. forget this. The juices. Gives a lovely bit of flavor, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So are you all going to come back and visit Ireland again? I hope you do. You know, not out in the field for nothing. Okay, so what we're going to do now is going to add a little bit of butter. And this is always something you should do when you're making a cream sauce. It helps add a little bit of gloss and a bit of richness to the cream as if you need any more. And of course, we're using Irish butter, Irish cream. This is an all Irish product. Now, we have our pancake here. And the best thing to do with your pancake is just to give it a little bit of a warm up in the pan. Okay. So you can have your pancake made ahead of schedule and then just reheat it in a, on a pan on a low heat and it'll work out absolutely fine. The pancakes are actually best made the day before. And if you leave them in the fridge overnight, they actually, because if you're going to cook them straight off, eat them straight off the pan, they'll little, be a little bit stodgy in the middle. So you let them cool down, they continue cooking, but then you take them out of the, put them in the fridge overnight, take them out and reheat them on your pan with a little bit of butter. They, they taste fantastic and they hold a lot better. Now, there's a, there is an upside and a downside of a boxy pancake. So you want this part, this lovely part here, to be underneath when you're putting your filling in so that when you roll it, that's the presentation side. And just to tell you that that side actually is the first side that goes down in the pan. Right, so we're just going to put our filling in the center. And then you roll the pancake towards you. So just like that. And top it off with some of this delicious sauce. Yes. You can put as little as, or as much as you like. And the great thing with box tea is it's gonna soak up all that flavor. Gaelic box tea. It's our beef, fillet of beef, wrapped around a box tea pancake with some portobello mushrooms, shallot, and a whiskey sauce. Where's yours? <laughs> next question to them might be, how are you? And one way to say that is in the standard form of konosatatu, how are you, konosatatu. There are a variety of ways of saying this, depending on what part of the country you're from, but we're just going to stick with konosatatu for right now. So what we have here is the verb to be in the present tense, kind of 
outline for you. So you'll notice that the word ta is consistently in the first position in each of these sentences. That is the verb to be in the present tense, ta, which is different than the way we do it in English. So in English, our subject pronouns come first. I sing, I dance, I eat. But in Irish and in some of the other Celtic languages, the verb comes first. And in this case, it's ta. So, konusutatu ta me go ma. Ta me go ma. I am well. Konusutatu ta tu go bra. You are fine. Ta tu go bra. So, tu means you. Ta she go donna. He is bad. Ta she go donna. She is the word for he. Ta she go jas. She is nice. She is our subject pronoun. Ta she go jas. Tomwich go ma. We are well. We are good. Tomwich go ma. Ta shiv, you guys. Ta shiv go bra. You guys are all fine. Ta shiv go bra. Ta shiid go donna. They are bad. Ta shiid go donna. So shiid is the word for they. So ta me, ta tu, ta she, ta shi, ta mwij, ta shiv, ta shiid. And then you can put your adjective behind that. So turn to whoever your uh, learning partner is right now and ask them, konosutatu. And if they responded with tamego ma, tamego dona, tamego jas, or tamego bra, any one of those would have worked. Okay, let's put it all together for our first Irish conversation. So we're going to start out with hello, gee gwich, gee smeira gwich, kadis einem dutch, Sean is einem dumb, kadis einem dutza, is misha moira, gee gwich a moira, and jas bulilat, konus a tamego ma. Agus konus tatu fein. Tame go bra gur magat. Kawil tu da khoni. Tame ma khoni ma waki ak is as narasin me. Ihoa slanagat slan lad. So now let's do it line by line. Jigwich, hello, God be to you. Jius Miragwich, God and Mary to you. Kadis einem dutch, what is your name? Sean is einem dum, kadis einem dutza. Sean is my name, what's your name? This misha Moira, I'm Moira. Chigwichawoira, I'm just Budalat. And you'll notice that in this case of Moira, we have an H there. Don't worry about that for right now. Konosatatu, how are you? Tame go ma. I am well. Konosatatu fein. How are you yourself? Tame go bra gurumagat. I am fine, thank you. Kawatu dohoni, where do you live? Tame mahoni Milwaukee, Akisas Madison me. I live in Milwaukee, but I'm from Madison. Iowa, good night. Slanagat. Bye, Slanlat. Bye to you. So I hope you can use this as practice uh, to continue learning Irish and have a great time doing it. Although our grounds are currently empty due to COVID, Milwaukee Irish Fest still has a mission to deliver. We know that just as in the past 39 years, we will be here at the festival grounds next year and for the next 39 years. Milwaukee Irish Fest is a registered nonprofit. Our mission is to ensure future and current generations appreciate and benefit from knowing the Irish, Irish American, and Celtic culture. We perform the mission throughout the year with our School of Music, our Ward's Irish Music Archives, the largest collection outside of Ireland, our summer school, and various programs all through the year. We cannot, however, deliver on this mission without your help. Please consider making a donation to Milwaukee Irish Fest. You can go to our website, irishfest.com, or you can call our office at 414-476-3378. Thank you.
God speaking to say, shut your mouth and talk to your mother. <laughs> She's getting that you get. Where is she? She's drunk under the table over there. Oh, right. Uh, she's, she's hiding. Oh, no. Anyway, no, she's drinking. Where were we? I was going to get you to try and sing a song with me. Would you sing a chorus of my daughter's here? Yeah. Now, if you're any of you were here. Yeah. Mary Mac, father, like a Mary Mac, 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 Mary Mary Mac, Mary Mac, Mary Mac, Mary Mac, Mary Mary Mac, 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 Mary He thinks, he's, he thinks he's Richard Simmons. Love your bodies, love your bodies, everybody, love your bodies. I'm not going to sing when we're back to you, I can tell you that. <laughs> Where were we? Well, what, do you know Mary Mary Mac's Mac's father's Mary Mary Mac? Mary Mac, 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 Mary Mary Mac, Mary Mac, Mary Mary yeah. My God, we've got the chorus with us today, and they're often this, right? Have I ever been cheered up? A sign appeared down there, you want to get lucky? <laughs> He's over there buying beer. Lucky. Okay, Mary Max, father. Did you, there were none of you singing at all, there was an awful lot of... Tommy, my side over here, they don't have it yet. If your side's got it. But they have the... Mary, Mary Max, Mary Max! Hold it. You have to sing it in the same rhythm as we're in, if you don't mind. I think we have a bunch of Protestants here tonight, Tommy. No rhythm in the house, no rhythm. That's not true. All the Protestants are standing up on the bridge ready to jump. Okay, try it again. And sing it out. We'll be singing a lot of songs with choruses tonight, so you might as well get used to it. No use in going halfway in these things. If you're going to do it, do it right. My motto is if you have an egg, lay it and don't be playing handball with it. Okay, let's go. Mary Mike's father, make a Mary Mike, marry me. My mother, Mary Mike. Go to Mary Mike. I've heard Bender coming out of a convent. Do you think them not? Do you think I don't be a threat of it? Roll it out. The people at the back are doing damn all, sitting with one arm as long as the other. Roll it out. Mary Mike, marry me. My mother, Mary Mike. 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 Mary Mike